So infinite gameplay has finally been revealed, and there's a lot of discourse. It was, you know, a little bit rough, the presentation. But after the gameplay reveal, I was able to attend a press briefing on the game with the leads, Chris Lee and Paul Crocker, who gave a bit more insight into exactly what the game is, and I spent the night kind of digesting everything. I finally feel confident in some of the opinions I have, and I want to walk you guys through what the game is exactly in the first place, and some things that I noticed that I thought were pretty cool, as well as some issues. If you find yourself enjoying the video, a like and a share is appreciated. Halo Infinite takes place many years after Halo 5, in the aftermath of a cataclysm of some kind. When we saw the Halo Galaxy last, there was a bit of a problem with an artificial intelligence uprising and the emergence of a powerful and rapidly growing military force of ex-Covenant called the Banished, which were expanding unchecked. But one problem at a time, right? Unfortunately, humanity does not have that luxury. Something happened four to five months before the events of Halo Infinite. Some kind of calamity in which humanity's forces were decimated and scattered. The massive, banished war machine seem to have finally stepped out of the shadows and are working with something they referred to as the Harbinger. All hope seemed lost until a simple pelican pilot stumbles upon the locked-up armor of the Master Chief, brings him online, and then together, he and the Chief take on the banished and try to kind of restart the spark of human resistance. Paul Crocker described this Pelican pilot as being kind of the most normal guy you could have put in a situation like this. While punching lasers and blowing up aliens is definitely kind of in Chief's wheelhouse, this pilot guy is just a little dude, and the dynamic between him and Chief I do think should prove interesting. So far from what we've seen, I think it's pretty funny that he has these visceral and emotional responses to everything, and it's all kind of just like bouncing off of Chief's stoicism. You! I can't stand this! Who you are! Breathe. No! You don't get to tell me what to do! You don't get to tell me anything! We're... Are you even listening? I count three anti-aircraft cannons. Three what? You'll be safe here. Oh, I'll be safe. <laughs> safe? The Banished on Halo are led by a brute war chieftain named Eshram. Eshram is a brute, and brutes live for the thrill of the hunt, right? Well, this dude is genuinely excited that Chief is a threat to him. He wants the thrill of the hunt, and he's seriously honored to be going up against the greatest Spartan to ever live. So obviously he's an antagonist to us, but in the game you're going to get this kind of sense of attachment. He's genuinely excited that he's going to be going up against the one the Covenant called a demon. This is my last fight. A true test of legends. Our story will outlive us both. Set a fire in your heart, Spartan. Bear your fangs. Fight hard. Die well. Hope, heroism, adventure, and mystery, well being some of the driving themes of the story, one of the Halo community's best writers, Heruspus, pointed out something rather interesting. Halo 4 was a tale of breaking down the man inside of the armor. Halo Infinite seems to be a tale of what it means to wear the chief armor, to be the hero of humanity. So here we are, this is the setting. Humanity's forces are scattered and on the run. The banished right now are in control for the moment, and it's up to Chief and this pilot to take them on and uncover what exactly is going on. That's a pretty solid jumping on point for new fans, and I'm actually really happy with how solid the story's foundation is. So when they talked about a spiritual reboot for Halo, they weren't just referring to the narrative, but also the player's gameplay experiences. 
Do you guys remember the second level of the first Halo game? Coming out of the drop pod, seeing these, at the time, incredibly large play spaces, and being tasked with saving marines scattered across the level, tackling them in any order you wish? The game seems to be built kind of like that, but on a larger scale. 343 has been taking a look at things that people liked about past Halo games. The large landscapes, the hidden goodies off the beaten path, the exploration, and the sense of a world larger than you'll realistically be able to explore. They want to recreate that for people. While the game doesn't seem to be full-blown open world, its levels are going to be so large that, as this map here shows, sometimes custom waypoint markers will be required to simply navigate the level. So, think of it less like Far Cry and more like ODST's hub worlds, married with Combat Evolved. Now, in the gameplay, we saw Chief using a couple of different toys and gadgets that you can find, such as a grappling hook and this portable shield thing. And they did say that items like the grappling hook are gonna perform a little bit differently in multiplayer. So the sandbox is kind of being tuned for the different gameplay suites. So the items will be functioning differently in campaign versus multiplayer. And of course, the enemies. The demo showed off the Banished in full force, employing the usuals, such as the Grunt, Jackal, and Elites, but also the Brutes this time, who are back after really a decade-long hiatus. There also seems to be a bit of cooperation in how the Banished units interact with each other. The Brutes are actually seen picking up Suicide Grunts and throwing them at the players. <laughs> One of my favorite details from the demo is also that red targeting lasers seem to come down from the sky and signal the impact of vanished drop pods, and when the brutes climb out of them, they begin to overheat and then violently explode as an excuse to despawn them. Most games would probably just opt for fading things out or hoping that the players won't notice when they despawn, so the attention to detail of actually having it just explode <laughs> is quite neat. The scale of the environments are also quite good. One of the biggest teases for me personally is what looks like a crashed UNSC frigate over here with a visible entrance right there, implying that I can actually enter this thing and explore it. For the sake of the demo, Chief turns right around and runs over to a Warthog, but when I play the final game, I'm gonna go over there and check out what's inside of it before I go and tackle the AA gun. There's still a lot more to learn about the game, but so far what I see is kind of exactly what I was hoping. Lots of player agency and freedom in the levels. So this is a weirdly specific part of the video. There is no connective tissue to anything I'm gonna say, it's just purely stuff that my brain latched onto and wouldn't let go of when watching the footage. So number one, I love the comical amount of blood that seems to spray out of enemies when you shoot at them. It's hard to notice it because of the coloration and the lighting, it kind of washes things out and it doesn't seem to stick on the ground. But there is blood that's coming out of enemies, and I appreciate how much of it is there. The wildlife is really cool. Some of it seems to be scripted for cinematic purposes, like birds being spooked by Chief. But others seem to have their own AI, like these weird beaver things. I love how expressive the grunts are, and how much personality most of these different banished units have. There's a lot of just personality in their animations. Burb. I love seeing the goofy pigeon jackal design back, <laughs> and I definitely loved seeing this goofy jackal over here just hanging out before igniting his shield when Chief engages with him. Someone even pointed out that some of the jackals are sporting armor that calls all the way back to Combat Evolved. There's a lot here <laughs> that I really like, and I guess we can talk about the brutes? I love their weapons so far. This giant thing called the Ravager looks almost like a supersized spiker. And the Mangler over here has a really impressive firing animation. Slow down the footage on YouTube and look how much it rumbles and shakes with each nail firing out. That's a really meaty and weighty animation, and I really like it. So one of the big things that I was worried about is the flow of combat. I was kind of critical of how the Covenant worked in Halo 5 and how the player engaged with them. I didn't think the player versus enemy balancing was right. 
but here, the flow of combat is quite good. Things are very snappy and responsive, and there's a lot of stuff in the environment that seems interactable this time around. There's lots of explosives laying around that can be detonated, little gadgets that you can pick up and deploy, and even fusion coils can be flung at enemies. This is cool. And then jumping over to the trailer for a second, I really like this stun grenade. It reminds me a lot of the EMP device from Halo 3, something that you can kind of lob over to a crowd of enemies to disarm or potentially stop a vehicle in its tracks. The sword looks awesome here, and the battle rifle also looks awesome. And lastly, the music. I, I don't really know what to say. I like it. The direction is good. It's exciting and adventurous. All right, let's talk about some of the issues, because there are some. Some of the biggest issues that I and others have is mostly related to the actual graphics of the game. At first, it was weird. When Chief steps out of the Pelican, something immediately wasn't right. The models and the world should, in theory, be great looking, but for some reason, this demo was very flat and kind of underwhelming. People have pointed out stuff like the grass or the cloud pop-in, which was a bit distracting, but I was more curious as to why the look wasn't clicking with me. When playing the demo at half speed on my 1440p monitor, you can see lots of subtle details in things, ranging from the particle effects of the elite shields when they pop, or the way that this brute drop pod starts smoking, and then the smoke is actually illuminated by the flames coming out of it, making it look angrier and angrier before detonating. There's a lot of good stuff here, a lot of good detail. The art direction is good. Let's take a look at this brute right here. He's very red and very toy-like, and I think if the red coloration looked a bit more splattered and crudely painted on, it would help get rid of some of the toy complaints that people seem to have. It's a really good-looking set of armor for the brute. It looks a lot like something from Halo 3 or Halo 2 Anniversary, but the coloring is a bit more evocative of how action figures are usually painted. Maybe if the red paint could just look a bit more chipped and rough, with clear gray areas underneath it where the paint is wearing, it would seem a bit more believable to people. Some folks have brought up the Reach Assault Rifle as a good comparison, and while the Halo Infinite Assault Rifle is objectively of a higher graphical quality, it's probably got more polygons in it than anything in Halo Reach, the Reach Assault Rifle looks better. Not because it is graphically better, but Bungie was very clever with how they do the texturing to imply more detail than there really is. I guess that would probably be a complaint that I do have. Overall, I do think the coloration and the lighting seems to not do these incredibly high quality models justice when the game is in motion. The classic art style does work in modern fidelity. Halo 2 Anniversary showed us that. I think some tweaking can be done before launch here. Yesterday was a pretty busy day for me. Lots was happening and a lot of stuff was being discussed about the game. I think the demo itself was a bit strangely paced and put together, and that is what was fumbled more than the concepts that they were presenting. I'm definitely interested to see more stuff like how the multiplayer will work and how the campaign as a whole will be structured. The pieces are there for something really interesting, and that's kind of how I feel on the topic. I think we have a good game here that's cooking in the oven. It's a shame that the presentation was a bit off. How do you guys feel about the game so far? What are some things that you noticed? And I'm gonna be reading some of this stuff because there's obviously a lot of stuff that I missed. People are pointing out new stuff almost hourly about the demo. And just let me know down below and I'll see you guys on the next video.